I would like to draw the attention of the Honorable Minister to the ever-increasing environmental threat posed by both micro and macro level usage of plastics and related products and their toxic effects resulting in pollution at every level, be it air, water, land, groundwater or for that matter visual pollution. All over India and beyond, plastic garbage has caused tremendous choking of sewage and drainage systems, resulting in severe health hazards, waterborne diseases and epidemics. While we acknowledge that something needs to be done immediately, steps taken by the central government are far from reality. Merely announcing a nationwide plastic ban will always turn out to be futile unless we provide viable and sustainable alternatives to the common people. Financial penalty is no solution to this behavioral menace. My humble request to the ministry is to evaluate this problem more seriously and dedicate more research to come out with alternatives like glass, wax-coated cloth, fiber cloth, wood, bamboo, earthen pots, etc. That will not only be eco-friendly, but it will also address the need of the common people. Honorable Speaker Sir, I would like to thank you for giving me this opportunity with a sympathetic heart to raise an important issue in this August House. I would like to call upon my colleagues' attention also as I rise to share the most painful and horrific incident which happened in my constituency in Tamil Nadu. Sujit Wilson, a two-year-old child, fell into a borewell hole and was battling for his life. We do not know for how many days, but the rescue operation ended after four days. The poor child was left without water, food, air, love and care of mother and was crying inside that dark hole. The last thing which was heard was the sound of Amma. Later we heard only the heart, hard breathing of the child. Those were probably his last hours. While I recall the incident, I still feel shivers down my spine. I could not sleep for days. As a responsible MP, I was left in a very difficult and painful situation to console the family and answer thousands and thousands of people who gathered at the spot across the state and outside with the hope and prayer that the child will be rescued. About a thousand people were also deployed in the rescue operation. There were national and state disaster response teams, fire service, district and police administration in full swing and experts from premier technical institutions like NIT and Anna University. ONGC and LNT also came to the rescue. There were private volunteer teams which were involved with their own rescue apparatus. Later we realized that we were left to depend only on them and that none of the government agencies had that kind of rescue mechanism. They all worked hard for four days. The former President of Congress, Shri Rahul Gandhi, and our Honorable Prime Minister, Shri Narendra Modi, also prayed for the well-being of the child. After that, it got the national attention. Sir, this is a very important issue. We do not realize this as an issue, and that is how these incidents keep happening. Coincidentally, Honorable Minister of Science and Technology is also here. I need two more minutes to explain the importance of this issue. Sir, millions of people outside Tamil Nadu and India prayed. I share with deep guilt and pain that we could not rescue the child, not even his fragile little body. Actually, we could not face the family at the spot. What we realized is that in the last part of the rescue operation, we could uh, smell only the decomposed body of that boy. See the situation of the family and the people who gathered around. This is not the only such incident. What kind of trauma, loneliness and fear the family would have gone through? Though the Tamil Nadu government was in charge of the rescue mission, they could have called the responsible rescue machinery like disaster management force at the right time when the child was at 14 feet and later. 27 feet down the hole. 
the child could have possibly been saved then but the child slipped further to 63 feet and 87 feet during the rescue operation then it seemed that everything came to an end there is no rescue operation as such this is not the only such incident at least 12 other children have died in similar incidents in tamil nadu according to ndrf over 40 children have died after falling into borewell holes since 2009 across the country one week after this horrific incident a similar thing happened in a village in haryana where a five-year-old was pulled out dead from a borewell hole by the ndrf i am afraid this that this kind of sheer negligence happens because the children who fall into borewell or drainage holes generally come from a poor background obviously these people do not have voice and representation maybe this is the reason disasters of this scale and magnitude keep happening in the country on one hand we are losing child after child without any remorse or regret on the other hand we have our isro sending rockets into space i thank you honorable speaker sir for giving me the opportunity to speak on a very important subject at the inception i extend my warm wishes and congratulations for celebrating the 550th anniversary of guru nanak dev at shri kartarpur sahib i thank honorable prime minister shri narendra modi who helped us realize our long pending demand of 72 years i also thank the central government for this achievement i also thank our honorable chief minister of punjab captain amarinder singh for his efforts in making this possible moreover i thank the pakistan government for allowing us to achieve our long pending demand sir i urge upon the government to do away with the requirement of passport for this purpose aadhar card should serve the purpose besides the fee of 20 dollars should also be done away with sir i also want to specifically thank you because the committee on external affairs in 16th lok sabha had recommended in 2017-18 that the kartarpur corridor be opened for sikh pilgrims sir coming back to the subject our trade relations with pakistan have come to a screeching halt after the balakot attack around 5000 porters and coolies have been directly affected and 10000 people have been indirectly affected due to the stoppage of trade between the two countries so i urge upon the government that trade between the two countries be resumed at the earliest before it was suspended trade worth 1500 crores of rupees was undertaken between the two countries those depending on this trade are finding it difficult to make both ends meet i request the government to kindly intervene in this matter and resume the indo-pak trade at the earliest honorable speaker sir i would like to raise a matter of very serious importance which deals with the international relations and international issues recently the honorable prime minister visited brazil despite the change of government brazil has chosen to stay with BRICS. that was actually a surprise to the world BRICS represents brazil russia india china and south africa each member of this very diverse and dispersed group has internal contradictions which are not easily overcome there are sharper contradictions between china and india it was russia that helped to develop this forum and sustain it the russian objective was to mount international opposition to the united states in the unipolar order that followed the collapse of the soviet union in 1991 as china rose in 21st century it found common ground with russia in fighting u.s dominance of the world china also found the BRICS a useful forum to promote a global economic agenda it is in sync with its emergence as the world's biggest exporter and second largest economy for both russia and china having three large developing nations india brazil and south africa as partners in their enterprise makes immense political sense but what is india's gain how is our interest in alignment with the declared policies of the brics 
Many of India's problems in the multilateral domain are rooted in China's opposition. It stalled our efforts to join the nuclear suppliers group. It also stalled taking action against the extremists who are being harbored in Pakistan. Delhi's biggest trade deficit is with China.